So we left it off where our blog list had all of these items and they're a little bit off with how they should actually be laid out. So realistically, are, they should be in columns and they should be even, right? So this middle one should not be in the middle, it should be on the left. That's kind of what we intuitively expected to see. Um, of course, if we collapse it down, it does move over a little bit, but it doesn't move exactly the way we want it to. So what I wanna do now is actually change it to where I have always three columns and there's a little bit of a separation between each column. That's what I wanna do and I have to do this through JavaScript. So what I'm gonna do now is open up the blog list component and in here I'm gonna create my own function to actually separating these items into their own separate arrays in a way that will allow us to iterate through them on this list. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking our normal array here and then we're gonna make an array inside of that array. So let's actually do that and we'll see what I mean. I'm going to copy a function that we've already created for you guys that you can just use. You can stop the video now and actually take a look at this function or you can look on GitHub for it. It's definitely inside of the code. But what we see here is essentially going to take out items in our array, place it in a new array, and then put that new array into a bigger array. <laughs> so a list within a list, basically. So sublists within sublists. So let's actually just make one and we'll show you. So we're gonna do function and data, and then we can do function and error data if there was an error. So this is a, what we're doing right here is a default built-in method um, for a resource like post. So you can always do this is the point. So we can always have done scope.data equals to scope.items equals to data. So if I don't change anything and refresh in here, still works. Data might be different. So definitely consider console log data. Sometimes that will be different. So you might want to look at it. Anyway, so we've got our item uh, data items here and that's nice and all, but what I want to do is actually change them to being like separated. So I'm going to leave that one and I'll say scope dot now we'll say column, so I'll just do call items equals two, and we're gonna chunk array in groups, and the array that we're using is the data, and then how many items we want in there, we want three. So we want each item to be in chunks of three. That's essentially what we're doing. We're taking the array, and then we're setting each item in chunks of three. So let's actually look at this with call items inside of our list. We save that and refresh in here. And now what you will see, if you look really closely, we have, now we have two arrays in here. So to do this, I can actually run two separate lists themselves. So let's try that. And I'm gonna do it using row. I'm gonna leave this stuff down here for a second. But now I'm gonna say ng repeat equals to items in call items. And then we'll close off the div. And then now I'll just re render items. I refresh in here. And now this makes it a little bit more clear. There's still an array here. And this array is now actually holding each individual item themselves. So there's an array within the array. So what that means is this stuff right here can now happen. And we just kind of separated it out. I save it. I refresh in here. And now that top one is what we just did. So I can go ahead and Let's just comment out the bottom one, save that, refresh. Now it looks much cleaner and much better. So when I collapse it down, notice that it's happening here still. So it's still happening. So let's make this down to column small four and we save it and refresh. Now it's still staying like that. And then finally it breaks down. So, so basically the point here is we wanna make sure that whatever we put here is gonna be consistent. Now this will require some a little bit of knowledge of Bootstrap. So a little quick hint of it is you can actually go on getbootstrap.com and look into their grid system and learn more about it here. So this grid system is really what we're doing here. And the different sizes will determine how big it will be at that given size or that given browser. So if you did column small four, that means that it's going to be one fourth of, or excuse me, one third of the column, right? So it's going to be split into four columns. Imagine if there's 12 columns all the way across and each one had a column. 
That's what's happening here, right? So we see 12 columns here. So column small four takes four of these columns, four of these columns, and then four of these columns. So what we wanna do then is when we're defining what our column is gonna be, let's say for instance, we wanted it half and half, so six. I refresh in here, it looks funny again, right? So the reason for this is I, I end up wanting only two columns. So however many columns you want, you divide by 12. So if this is 12, I want two columns, then I change this to six, refresh, and now I have six. So what does that mean? Then in my component, the units themselves, I have to change to whatever I'm trying to divide it by. So I refresh and there we go. So I can make this just a little bit more robust and we could say var num columns or num calls equals to two. So let's, we want it to be two. So we'll say var CSS class equals two. Well, I'm gonna do column small dash and then we want to add we're gonna do 12 divided by num calls. And this hopefully will be our class. We actually don't need to make it a var variable. We can just now change it to scope.css class. And we'll put num calls in here, save that. And I'll come back into our actual component here. And we're gonna get rid of this call small and just do CSS class, save it, refresh. And now this is working. Let's go back into our component and let's change it to number of columns. We want four. We change that and notice it changes to four. We break it down and it's working really, really nice. Now, if we want to ch check this, of course we could just add a ton of data. So let's go back into our JSON dictionary and I'm gonna copy the first three and paste them several times. I only copy the first three because there's a comma that finishes them. So I saved it and we go down here. Notice the IDs are gonna be off. So the actual links are gonna go to the same places, but if I refresh in here, oops, I need to refresh in my JSON. There we go, refresh in here. Uh, JSON's working. Looks like it's not wanting to actually separate. Let's try and undo some of these and we'll just add them the old fashioned way. That is copying and pasting the last couple. Put a comma here, change this to five. Let's see if this does anything. Change it to six. Save it, post data is changed, refresh. We might need to come back to this. I'm gonna pause it for a second and come right back. Okay, and I'm gonna just restart the server. This has everything to do with how the cache is working. So let's get that server rerunning with rack up again. And I actually am gonna jump into our post service and I'm gonna turn these caches to false. This could be part of the reason that it's taking so long to actually update. Let's now console log this data. Like we said, we definitely wanna see stuff like this happen because it should help us get a little bit better at what we're working on. It's still giving us only the array of four even though there's definitely more than that inside of our resource itself. So it's still stuck on that array. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna clear browsing data and we're gonna clear all of this stuff. So clear browsing data in the past hour and we refresh and there it goes. So that's where our cache can mess with us just ever so slightly. And let's go back and add all of that data again Hopefully that helped you guys. I wanted to show you that in real time, mainly because um, that's stuff that you run into a lot and sometimes just cleaning the cache is what does it for us. So anyways, here is our new blog list. This is pretty cool. It looks a lot better. Um, but if I don't like this four anymore, I could come in and do something like two, right? And there we go. So hopefully what you're also seeing is we can make this just a little bit more dynamic. So if we jump into this component, we are just writing some JavaScript here. So that means we can change this at will, especially with the CSS class, how we did it and how we defined how this works. So let's, for instance, let's create a new function and I'm gonna say set up calls and we're gonna create the data. We're gonna set up columns from the data um, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna just cut this out with all the column stuff. 
And the reason I'm doing this is so I don't have to write it more than once. So we'll say data and number. Okay, so set of columns right off the bat, we'll do data being the data and the number being whatever number we want to come in by default. So I'll just say two. So now this number, we are gonna change this to being this number. So I'll just come in here and say scope num calls equals to two. And we're gonna change all these back to scope data. Now this all should work just fine. I do wanna put a clause in here. So we'll say if angular dot is number of the number that we're passing, then we will set the scope to that number. Don't need that parentheses there. We need it here. Otherwise we will set the scope to two or whatever defaults you want in there. So we'll put this number here and there we go. So now we're setting up the columns how we want. So I'll just say five here. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this, save it, and we'll refresh in here. Looks like we might have a little bit of an error. So let's see the console, unexpected token. Looks like we might have an, oh, right here. So this should be scope.num calls. There was our little error, let's refresh. And we got another error at line 21, and that's the same thing, same error. Refresh, and there we go. So it changed to five, so it's kind of switched how we want it to be. That's probably not what I want, so let's change it back to four. And I refresh, and that works fine. So five just doesn't work very well. If we do six, should be six, there it is. That's the number of columns we have. And then let's go back to two, and there it is. So it's nice and dynamic for us. But since we have this, that also means that we should be able to change our columns. We should be able to actually change them too at any time. So I'm gonna make a new function called change calls, and it's gonna be equal to, well, just basically whatever number we want. So we'll just say number. And again, I'm gonna put this if statement in here, and I will put it, I put this entire if statement in just so we have a clause that makes sure that whatever number is being passed is actually a number, otherwise we'll just set some default. And now that we've got that, we can actually set up the columns with the scope.items, and then we can set it up with the number again. So basically the exact same sort of thing that we did with that query, but this scope.change calls probably shouldn't even show up if scope.items is not there, but we'll actually do some stuff here in just a second. So let's go in the post list and inside a blog list, I'll just say small. We're gonna add in that small tag and we'll add in an anchor tag that does nothing other than just change the columns to however we want. So we'll just do ng click equals to change calls to four. And we'll say change, change calls. There we go, there we go. Refresh here, we're at two, I hit change, it changes super dynamically, super quickly. Of course, it's not changing every time. It's not doing some random number, um, but it is allowing us to change, which means that we have a lot of functionality that we can run with on this, which is super nice as far as the dynamicness of how all of this stuff works. Of course, the last, very last thing is when we come in to this blog list, we could add a filter right below this. I'm gonna add a filter, a div class, column small six, close off the div, and we'll do input type equals to text, ng model equals to query, and class equals to form control, and placeholder equals to filter. Close that off. And then inside of our repeat, we can just add our filter here of query. We save it, refresh, and now if I do new new item or light, it doesn't actually look that great, right? So that is something that's still a little bit of a challenge on how that part will work. But as far as the rest of it, it looks pretty good. We could do all sorts of things, like if there is a query, we could set up a way to monitor that there's a query happening and change the CSS class accordingly. It's really simple, actually. Come back and we jump in, and I'm gonna do it under change columns, and I'll say scope.watch. So this is watching 
the scope for something changes basically. So function, and we're gonna come in here and we'll say if scope.query. So if, if, if there's even a query, then we're gonna change our class. So I'll do scope.css class equaling to column small 12. Otherwise, we're gonna set up our default by going off of this project one. So I'm gonna come copy that and do scope.items. Now you might be wondering why is it that I'm doing this way? Well, I'm gonna show you something in just a second here. So we'll do console log the scope.query. All right, so now that we've got this, let's see what happens here. Let's refresh in here and I'll say light. Notice it changes. If I go back, it goes away. I go to inspect element here, look in the console and I type this out. We're getting, we're getting some actual comments coming through and it looks like it's, it's not wanting me to constantly be doing this. So let's change something here and I'll say, we'll do var, excuse me, scope dot loading query equaling to false. And as soon as if query, we're gonna change this to being true. And then in the else clause, we'll say if scope dot loading query. So if the query has been loaded, then we're gonna do that. And then if it, once we've done that, we're gonna change that back to being false. Let's see what happens. I refresh in here and it's going in there. We've got undefined here. I type out some query, it goes away. I get rid of that query, it goes away as well. So this little decision tree is basically saying, hey, watch the scope. And while things are happening, see if there's a query. If there's not a query, let's see if we even loaded a query. And if we have loaded a query, then go back to the default and then change that we haven't loaded a query this time around. Um, and that's essentially what's happening here. Now this is really cool because it's allowing us to change how our queries actually work. There is one thing that I wanna do on my list and that is getting this into its own row. So we'll do div class equals to row. That way we don't have that weird indentation like we've seen. Save that and refresh and now that weird indentation goes away and I can do light. Okay, so. This is a lot of very dynamic stuff that we're doing here. And um, well, the nice thing about this is it's allowing us to query, it's allowing us to do a lot, but it's not doing pagination. So we have, what if we had a thousand blog list items or something, we would want to see pagination. But what we've done here so far is actually really, really powerful and valuable. And as you notice, it's really, really simple, straightforward. We've talked about a lot in 15 minutes and we've accomplished a lot. A lot of functionality that would have taken so much longer using any other method. If you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.